Hi there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our word of the day series where we examine a new word each day for American English pronunciation, help you to notice and recognize any accent error patterns you might be making on this word. We'll talk about similar words and how to begin to be able to build these accurately, fluently, and with correct pronunciation in your everyday personal and professional communication. We've had many wonderful requests for words of the day, and I've been doing entirely your requests in the last few weeks. So please feel free to leave your request, comment, or suggestion on this video or any of my videos. I love getting the requests because it helps me know what topics to cover in my lessons and what things you need help with. Today's request was for the word, uh, I can't remember if the request was curious or, or curiosity, but I'm covering both words uh, since they're similar and if we need to say one, we may need to say the other. Um, so first let's look at the word curious. This is the adjective. Um, someone can be curious, it describes the, the person or the thing. And um, we'll look at uh, both American English pronunciation and British English pronunciation for you for this word. Um, in both cases, we have first syllable stress. So the first syllable is long and then curious. The second two syllables are shorter and reduced. Um, I would say the challenging thing about this word is that it has this hidden y sound in it. Also, how to make the vowel sound with the C-U-R. So we have many different spellings for this vowel, er. Um, I like to think of it as E-R, because it's a very common spelling for it at the ends of words, and it's our tight American R. If you need help with American R, use the videos from American R playlist to help you get that sound. For now, let's talk about in the word curious how the R um, is pronounced. So we have, as I said, this hidden y sound, and that's the sound that we often spell with letter Y in American English. And um, so we have our k and our y sound. And then for most speakers of American English, we go right into the er sound. So it sounds like cure, cure. It's actually very similar to the word cure, uh, like a cure for the coronavirus disease. Um, so we're going to start with our cure. If you have trouble with that, try to start just with er, and then add your Y sound, er, your, finally, cure, cure. And then our letter I says the E sound in this word, cure, E. And finally, we have a schwa and an S sound, curious, long, short, short curious. The difference in British English would be that they tend to use more of a, a clear oo vowel rather than just the er sound. So they would say it more like, uh, so this is American. British would be cu curious. Um, I would write it the same way, with but put in a u sound, curious. Um, curious. And um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about curious. I do think sometimes Americans will say a little bit of an ooh there too, curious. Um, it's a little bit um, in between. When we change to curiosity, uh, we have quite a bit of a change in American English. Our syllable stress changes. We no longer have first syllable stress and our vowels change. So in curiosity in American English, we have, um, we go to more of the oo sound with curiosity um, rather than um, just the er sound like we had in curious. So I will have the y, cur, e, ah, that's where my stress is, ah, s, b. I'm almost running out of room there. Okay, so the difference is, instead of first syllable stress, we have stress on the third syllable. The O sounds like ah in this word, so that's going to be where I'm stretching, curiosity. I'm still going to have my kya sound, but 
but I will use more of the ooh here. I do think you can also say cure, curiosity or curiosity. Um, so I would say either you or you're there for American English. Cure, e, ah. And then I have just like the word city, um, sometimes spelled with C. In this case, we'll write it with an S. We have vowel i, uh, which is lax. And then we have to end with a tense e, city. We've had a lot of words ending in city or liddy. And the challenge here is that I have the lax i followed by the tense e, but neither one is stressed in this case. And my letter T is a flap in this word. So it sounds more like a D. If I think about it like a light D, I'll be able to say it correctly. You might wanna build this one from the back. E, D, itty, city, osity, osity, eosity, curiosity. Uh, that's challenging to do. So. Depending on what helps you, sometimes I like to build the word from the back because I want to focus on each of the syllables and the sounds rather than once I start trying to say curiosity from the beginning. However, I used to say it, my habitual way might be what comes out. I may make the same accent errors that I always do. If I break it apart, curiosity, or build from the back, that's a new way that my mouth hasn't said it and my brain hasn't thought of it before and that can help me build it and say it accurately and correctly. Once I can say curious and curiosity uh, easily and effectively with correct pronunciation by themselves, I wanna start to begin to use them in some short phrases so that it becomes easy to use them all, all along. So um, I'll make some phrases for you to practice. We can try, um, I'm curious about what your native language is. Um, she was curious to find out what would happen when school was supposed to start in the fall. Her curiosity kept her always learning. Um, my curiosity about languages is what drives me to uh, teach American accent. Okay, uh, so thank you for the suggestion for those words. They're, I think, very good words to look at. A lot of accent patterns, a lot of challenges with those words. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about a similar word that has that same hidden Y sound, which is the word during. And we're also, again, tomorrow going to look at American English versus British English. And part of why I do this is because for some of you, when you were taught English, you were taught the British English pronunciation for things. Um, also, many dialects of English around the world are have different pronunciation, and British English is very similar to a lot of the dialects of English spoken in Africa and in India and elsewhere. So it can be useful to know about those differences, and if you're working towards more of the American pronunciation to know how to do that, or if you are finding one or the other pronunciation easier for you, then they're both acceptable. So thanks so much for being a part of class today. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for our word during. If you have a request or suggestion, as I said in the beginning, please feel free to leave that in the comments. If you're watching this not live, you can ask your questions. And I do go back and check all of those comments uh, send you links and resources where you can find information for your question on the channel and also on my website, speechmodification.com. I'll see you again tomorrow for our word of the day. And I hope to also see you on Friday for our free weekly question and answer class. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound American, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. <laughs>